causing traffic issues this noon. Our Stephen Cabasos has the latest. Some scammers are now targeting our military community. Coming up, a nonprofit that has some tips to help keep you from becoming a victim. Live from KSA 12. The news at noon starts right now. It was a rough morning for a dump truck and the drivers who got stuck behind its accident, but the driver of an SUV got the worst of it. Bear County Sheriff's investigators say the SUV driver was killed when that vehicle collided with the dump truck on Highway 90 near Castorville. Katrina Weber reports the crash has also led to some major traffic problems over the last few hours. Broken car parts scattered across Highway 90 are signs of a shattered life. Bear County Sheriff's investigators say a woman was killed when her SUV plowed into the back of a dump truck just east of Castroville. They say she was heading west on the highway after 7.30 this morning and hit the truck which had pulled out of a neighborhood at Pioneer Estate. The woman was ejected from her SUV and died. Investigators say at this point it doesn't look like the dump truck driver did anything wrong. In the words of one of them, this was just a horrible accident. They say for some reason that SUV driver simply ran into the back of this truck. They believe she was the only one in her vehicle, but to make sure deputies did a thorough search of the area. They also did a thorough investigation, shutting down the westbound highway for hours as they tried to find out what caused that driver to crash. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. And we are continuing to keep an eye on the roadways here in the traffic lab. US 90 at State Highway 211. Katrina was just talking about this in her story. As we take a look right now, this TransGuide camera doesn't really show a whole lot of traffic out there. I did talk to our friends at TransGuide. Now, what they are telling us is that investigators are still out there on the scene. Keep in mind, this is one of the furthest cameras that TransGuide has out in the county. Now, it is picking up some traffic out there. Again, a scene that is not cleared, but right now, vehicles are taking the access road there along US 90. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the map if we can really quick here us 90 westbound at pioneer estate is where that traffic that crash was located you can see that there is a minor delay there but nothing too bad because again vehicles are getting onto the access road but first responders are still out there we're going to continue to give you an update but a wider look at the map does show that we are in pretty much good shape back here in town so again the big scene is going to be out there at castroville uh, right now those outbound times if you're driving into uh, castroville 19 minutes from the downtown san antonio area so not bad but you got to watch out for first responders and you can still expect a delay that we're going to continue to give you those updates on guys. Thanks so much, Steven. New at noon, a San Antonio police officer taken away in handcuffs while she was off duty. The department says that she may have been drinking behind the wheel. According to SAPT, SAPD rather 52 year old Rosemary Caudillo was arrested for uh, this incident at Loop 410 and State Highway 16 last night. Officers were called to check the area out because there was a driver who was on the side of the road. Well, police officers found Caudillo and ended up charging her with driving while intoxicated with an open container. She's assigned to South Patrol. She's been with the department for 17 years. The department says that she will be suspended without pay. A driver tried to get away from police, ended up crashing into two other drivers on the city's northwest side. That's according to SAPD. It happened just before four this morning near the intersection of Grissom Road and Timber Hill Road. Police say they were in an area to investigate reporting of a carjacking, and that's when they spotted a driver in a car whom they thought was the suspect they were looking for. When they tried to run the car's plates, the driver took off and then ended up crashing with two other drivers. Police say that driver did not end up being connected to the carjacking. However, they say the driver's car was reported stolen by that person's girlfriend. The driver will face charges for running from police. No one was seriously hurt in the crash. San Antonio is Military City USA for a reason. It's home to thousands of military men and women and thousands of veterans as well. Applying for, filing for military benefit programs, though, can be a long and sometimes frustrating process, so you need to be careful. Max Massey shows us the Wounded Warriors Project has seen a lot of predatory schemes that are targeting our military community. 30 years in the Army, uh, retired in 2019. After 30 years of service, Mike Stoddard is working to help his brothers and sisters in arms via the Wounded Warrior Project. One of the nightmares that we, we tend to uh, have to deal with is when uh, a veteran or a family support member goes to a place that is, is doing unethical practices, and then they sign a contract or they get involved in something that we 
really can't go back and fix. During this pandemic, there's been a lot of predatory schemes on things like social media. So if you are signing up or filing, there are two important questions that you need to ask. First and foremost, uh, you should ask the question, uh, are you accredited through Veterans Affairs? That's the first question. The second question is, uh, are you going to charge me? Stoddard said simply, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Veterans need to make sure they are protecting themselves when seeking assistance for things like filing disability claims, rating changes, or even pensions. Texas Veterans Commission is great. They have offices all across the counties and all across. The most important thing is you go to somebody accredited. So your veteran service organizations, your state veteran service officers, or just, again, Go to WoundedWarriorProject.org. Veterans can file VA claims on their own behalf for free through the VA. They also have access to numerous veteran services organization. But if you choose to use an outside agency, it is easy to check accreditation. If you simply just get on whatever your search engine is and type Veterans Affairs Accreditation, a link will pop up and you can type somebody's name or organization into this website and they will tell you if they are accredited or not. And that updates in real time. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. It is a big day today because it's almost that time. The party with a purpose. Of course, we're talking about Fiesta. It kicks off in April. Today, we're going to learn where you can catch the Battle of Flowers and Fiesta Flambeau Parade because this year the parades are going to take a different route because of all that construction on Broadway. This afternoon at 1, the Fiesta Commission will reveal details about the new route. We'll live stream this update on our website, KSAT.com. The 2022 Battle of Flowers Parade will be held on Friday, April 8th, and the Fiesta Flambeau Parade is taking place on Saturday, April 9th. And speaking of Fiesta, the Texas Cavaliers announcing the finalists and the grand prize winner of the 2022 River Parade Art Contest this morning. Students submitted their interpretation of this year's River Parade theme, Texas Al Fresco. All of the winners will receive scholarships to art camps the grand prize winner gets what a burger for a year, and they're going to be honored with a float in the Texas Cavaliers River Parade. Some of the art programs don't have adequate funding, so to be able to have this contest, we have over a thousand entries. It's difficult to sort out, uh, but but this money goes straight into the hands of the programs, so that they can provide all kinds of supplies. Uh, for their art programs. We divide it by council district. So these, you know, what's so especially exciting is to get these kids up on a platform where they're recognized for their talent. The Texas Cavaliers and its sponsors will also donate $46,000 to art programs in the schools where the winners and the runners up attend. The Texas Cavaliers River Parade scheduled for Monday, April 4th. A stretch of great weather this work week. A few changes over the weekend, including a cold front, some gusty winds, too. We'll talk about it coming up. Also coming up, DeJounte Murray thankful and excited about his first selection to an all-star game. Larry Mirrors with more in sports. Last year's winter storm had wide-reaching impacts that we're still talking about today, and that's why it's the topic of the first episode of The Breakdown. It is our new streaming series hosted by Stefania Jimenez and Steve Spreester. It debuts tonight at 7 on all of our digital platforms. Steph and Steve are going to be sitting down with CPS Energy CEO Rudy Garza, Councilwoman Anna Sandoval, and other experts to discuss if CPS is ready for another storm. You can join the conversation by using hashtag Steph and Steve on all social media. Taking a look outside with live cam. It's pretty out there again. We're on the eve of the rodeo. You, you might want to go out and buy a cowboy hat in this kind of sun. Uh, it is pretty nice out there. You know, we were just talking about the winter storm. I was looking back at some of my Facebook memories today. It was a year ago today that we were starting to talk about the threat for wintry weather and cold temperatures, and we know what happened after that. Uh, so there you go. We're, we're approaching that one year anniversary. Uh, looking at the aquifer, it's up two tenths of a foot to 665.4 in your pollen count. Everything's low again. That looks great. We've got a pretty good looking forecast again. The weekend changes a little bit. We'll take a look at the seven day coming up.
Are you ready? This Thursday, the first day of the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo, and you can scan the QR code on your screen and that'll take you right to our website with all the festivities. This year, we're gonna be broadcasting the kickoff live on KSAT 12 with a two hour live broadcast of the rodeo itself starting at seven o'clock on Thursday night. And then at nine, it's like a post game show. You can join Ursula and I and we'll be catching up with some of the winners of those events, like the winner of the bull riding, the winner of the barrel racing. They're gonna join us and we'll do some interviews and we'll take you around the, the grounds because there's a lot of things that have changed since the last time you were at the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo. We took a tour yesterday yeah. and yeah, there's a lot to see that's new, improved, you logged a lot of miles, I hear. We did. I, I, my feet hurt. So were you, <laughs> were, were you sweating yesterday? I mean, wasn't that warm? I or? actually, uh, yeah, uh, it was, ended up taking off the jacket, yeah. and, but you needed a hat because it was sunny. Full sun, full sun. You know, temperatures weren't that bad, but when you're doing a lot of walking and moving around, you, know, you will break sweat. This uh, with temperatures in the 70s, that's what we're looking for today. We're already up into the upper 60s. But before we talk about temperatures, let's talk about rainfall. You know, it hasn't been all that great so far this winter. We did really well in October as we look at the last five months. But once we got into November, December, January, really the, the rainfall totals have been very low. And then here in February, we picked up about 1.69 inches uh, with our last rain event, of course, turned to ice. Some of that was in the form of ice. So we are technically above average the month of February. But since October 27th, we've only had about 4.1 inches of rain. We could use some more rain, as we often say around here, but uh, the rain chances are not great. We have one small chance on Saturday. It's mainly in the morning, and that's even if we get anything on the radar at all. If we do, it'll be very light. So uh, that, that is our one and only chance. As you look outside right now, not even a cloud in the sky. It is uh, 65 degrees at the airport, 68 stints, and 67 Kelly, 66 at Randolph. And winds are out of the west at about 10 miles per hour. There have been a few gusts up close to 20, but it's not going to be an overly breezy day. Uh, we think temperatures top out at about 71 this afternoon, sunny skies, and then uh, those temperatures fall off quickly tonight into the 50s. And by tonight, it'll be chilly once again, just like this morning, but we're not looking for freezing temperatures uh, this morning here in San Antonio. We got into the mid 30s, but we did not drop down to freezing. Dew points, they're still really dry. Uh, there is uh, maybe a little bit of growth in the dew point as we get into Friday into Saturday. But it's not much and we're still in the dry category and that's why again rain chances on Saturday just aren't great. They, they fall these two points fall again thanks to a frontal boundary that have been moving through early on Saturday. Here's the upper level pattern. So we have a low up here over the Great Lakes. That's bringing a little bit of unsettled weather there and then you've got the, the jet stream coming in out of the northwest. In the wintertime, this is a this is a quiet pattern for us. It doesn't bring in much. Uh, there's no nothing downstream that moves through Texas that's going to bring any big changes here. And temperatures are just not all that cold. 40 in Chicago, 48 St. Louis, 61 Memphis, 60s uh, down there close to uh, Dallas, 64 degrees there, 43 Albuquerque. There's some warmer stuff as you get out west. But I do want to take you up into Canada. Oftentimes we look up into Canada to see what's kind of headed our way if there's a big chunk of cold air that's going to spill down the plains. And yes, these numbers are cold, but we're starting to get up to the Arctic Circle here and these numbers are not terribly unusual. Negative 40 up there and there's no indication that this cold air is spilling south. So for the time being, we're fine. We're not looking for any big Arctic outbreaks here in the next couple of days. About as good as it gets 71 today, 70 tomorrow. And as we get into Friday, we'll be right out ahead of a cold front. So that pushes temperatures to 73. Friday is our warmest day. That cold front comes through Saturday morning. If you have plans Saturday morning, you got some soccer matches to take the kids to know that there could be a shower or two. It turns windy and colder. And by the afternoon, we do we do get a little bit of clearing. Temperatures will be in the upper 50s. If you're heading out to the rodeo, you may want to take a light jacket with you, but the weather won't be all that bad. Winds calm on Sunday and we've got some uh, good weather coming up. For Super Bowl Sunday. So here's how it plays out in the seven day forecast. 70s next few days. Overnight lows will be in the 40s. Saturday, windy, 10% chance of some showers, mainly in the morning. And then uh, 63 on Sunday and sunny. Temperatures get a little close to closer to freezing Sunday morning. Uh, Valentine's Day, 67 and sunny. We're back in the 70s next week. So yes, as we approach the anniversary of the big freeze of last year, this year is looking very different. And I think we're okay with that. So much going on this week, too. Rodeo, Super Bowl, Valentine's. 
Spurs in Cleveland. It's like 45 in Cleveland, so it's not that bad. They're not missing a whole lot down here. Yeah, I mean, Too bad. Yeah, and plus, you know, they're inside. They have a short yeah. walk to the bus, so. We're not worried about them. Yeah, they're not all that cold. Not like they're not pampered or anything. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> hey, the Spurs open up the rodeo road trip tonight at the Cleveland Cavaliers. It is an eight-game trip for the Spurs. Plus, DeJounte Murray said he broke down when he learned he was an all-star for the first time. Coming up. so crazy it's so crazy i swear it's crazy uh it's it's definitely hit me but not as much as i say that it should i'm still like halfway like nah this is a dream and the other half like nah it's real oh it's certainly real dj you're a 2022 nba all-star on spurs game day Keldon and the Spurs will try to flex all over the Cleveland Cavaliers tonight in game one of the rodeo road trip. The Spurs will play eight games in a span of 26 days, and they'll get a nine-day break after their fifth road trip game thanks to the NBA All-Star Contest and that break. This year's road trip will take them to Cleveland, Atlanta, New Orleans, Chicago, OKC, Washington, Miami, and Memphis to close it out. Three-plus weeks on the road is a very long time. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's long. You're on the road a long time. I mean, then all-star break comes and most people leave, so you're still kind of living out of a suitcase. So um, it's just something you got to just get used to and um, hopefully you pack a lot of underwear and, and get ready to go. I mean, I, I approach it like every other road trip. I mean, I, I don't even think this year it's that long. Uh, yeah, I mean, I've been on long road trips before. Before I got to the Spurs, like sometimes you catch a, one and a half, two week road trip. So yeah, it's, it is what it is. You just got to deal with it. Spurs at the Cavs. Here's the matchup tonight. Trey Jones is questionable because of a dental procedure and Lonnie Walker, the fourth is questionable with right knee soreness. Spurs point guard DeJounte Murray is finally an NBA all-star. He's now a member of the Western Conference team after NBA commissioner Adam Silver named him as an injury replacement for Draymond Green. DJ spoke with the media yesterday via Zoom from the team hotel in Cleveland and told us that Pop called him to break the good news. He just was joking around for a minute about other stuff. And then he just told me that, you know, um, I'm going to Cleveland, I'm an all-star. And I just broke down uh, with my family, uh, broke down crying with my family and stuff. And it just was a, a real moment, uh, you know, just for them to see and hear that and you know just everything i've been through you know not even just me just my family you know we dealt with a lot you know uh since i was really really young all the way to now uh still do it a lot you know so it's good to just see some blessings just coming through to good people nba all-star game is all set for sunday night february 20th from cleveland ohio Girls high school basketball last night. Regular season finale for the Johnson Jaguars facing Roosevelt Littleton Gym. First quarter, Rough Riders Kennedy Ray hits her second straight three to pull Roosevelt within one. But the Jaguars answer quickly. Nice feed inside to Addison Iden for the turnaround J. Jaguars cap the regular season with a win, 69-31. And next up, the playoffs for the Jaguars. It was nice to see DJ with some emotion. Yeah. You know, so many guys go to the All-Star game. They've been there so many times. It's like, yeah, it's just another yeah. weekend of fun for That's me. really but, cool. Indeed. But to see this kid just really yeah. appreciate that. That's awesome. Thanks, Larry. New today at 5 with the one-year anniversary of the February freeze coming up. We're taking a look back on the impact it had here in San Antonio. We've heard from the San Antonio Food Bank and local nurses who all stepped up when San Antonio needed it most. And tonight, we're taking on the topic through the eyes of KSAT. Hear from some of the people who were keeping you informed through the storm. Today at 5 after Entertainment Tonight. This Rodeo Remembers, brought to you by the new 2022 Chevy Silverado, the strongest, most advanced Silverado ever. In the world of sports, the rodeo belt buckle is a unique prize with an interesting history. It begins with the old military tradition of looking your best when heading into battle. During the Civil War, cavalries kept that tradition going with their shiny buckles. When the war ended, those buckles moved west with veterans and the U.S. Cavalry. Another possible origin, the Texas Rangers. To carry their revolvers, it's believed that some started wearing fancy vaquero belts. At the early rodeos, you wouldn't have seen many big buckles. Prizes varied and some cowboys wore suspenders. 
Things changed in the early 1900s. Buckles were becoming Western formal wear, and Wild West shows were being replaced by the silver screen. Hollywood's cowboys were wearing buckles, real cowboys started wearing jeans, and buckles became awards. You know, the story that started around the 20s, easier to, uh, to carry, you know, in the way of life that they had, and now it's just, you know, part of it. <laughs> You're not gonna go anywhere, they're not awarding buckles inside of this type of uh, sport. Today, rodeo buckles are an emblem, a keepsake, and an honor. We have some late-breaking news this noon. A fire investigation on the far west side leads to a gruesome discovery. Officials tell us they found a body inside a home in the 9800 block of Misty Plain Drive. Firefighters got to the scene just before 7 this morning. In the beginning, fire crews thought that the home was unoccupied. However, later they found a person dead inside this home. It's not clear how or when that person died. Firefighters say the fire caused extensive damage inside the house. We're going to have the latest tonight on the news at 5 and 6. Police in Cleveland investigating the discovery of a woman's body on the ice of Lake Erie. Someone found the body near a pier on the beach and called authorities. The Coast Guard also responded to the call just in case police fell through the ice as they investigated. Right now, officials say clues as to what happened to the victim are limited. A former American Idol contestant from last season now facing a charge of felony DUI resulting in death. South Carolina police say that 17 year old Caleb Kennedy entered a private driveway and crashed into a building yesterday, injuring a 54 year old man. That man was transported to the hospital and later died of his injuries. You might remember Kennedy, a country music singer appearing on American Idol making it to the top five, but then he abruptly had to leave the show after a controversial social media post resurfaced online. A stranger at the door asked to use the bathroom and a homeowner ends up with a knife in his stomach. This happened in New York. That homeowner is now recovering, but says the stranger initially knocked on his door asking where to buy groceries. After giving him some direction to the store, he asked to use the bathroom. The victim says once inside, the suspect pulled a knife. Next thing I know, I feel a knife going into my stomach and side. I went down, then he started stabbing me in the face, got me in the throat. The suspect even attacked the man's wife, but she was able to escape to a neighbor's house to call for help. DeFazio locked himself in a bathroom until police came. Police say the attack appears to be random. Pfizer now working to get its COVID fighting pill to non high risk COVID patients. That pill is called pa pla Paxlovid. It is currently authorized to treat COVID-19 in high risk people 12 and older. Pfizer is planning to study the drug in children ages 6 to 18 sometime this quarter. Right now, the company is calling for full approval from the FDA on the pill for the groups on its currently authorized to treat. Pfizer says it expects that decision in the second half of the year. The chief scientific officer says the company is also working on a next generation pill to help treat COVID. On Capitol Hill, top Republicans publicly sparring over the events of January 6th. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell blasting the Republican National Committee for calling the Capitol attack, quote, legitimate political discourse. While other GOP members are standing firm with former President Trump, Elizabeth ABC's Elizabeth Schulze has the latest from Washington. A rift is deepening among Republicans over the deadly January 6th attack on the Capitol. Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell unequivocally rebuking the Republican National Committee for calling the riots legitimate political discourse. It was a violent insurrection for the purpose of trying to prevent the peaceful transfer of power after a legitimately certified election. Thousands of supporters of former President Trump violently stormed the Capitol January 6th to disrupt the certification of Joe Biden's election win. As Trump has doubled down on his falsehoods about the election results, the RNC took the unusual step of censuring two GOP members of Congress, Adam Kinzinger and Liz Cheney, who are part of the House Select Committee investigating the attack. The RNC accusing them of persecuting people engaged in legitimate political discourse. The RNC has every right to take any action. Top Republicans, including House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy, are still standing by the former president while running away from questions posed by our Rachel Scott. You know, I'm making an appointment in office to come up on the time.
In a new op-ed, RNC Chairwoman Ronna McDaniel is defending the censure resolution, writing, I have repeatedly condemned the violence that occurred at the Capitol on January 6th and do so again today. Adding violence has no place in our political discourse, period. But other Republicans, including former Vice President Mike Pence, are now taking a stand, saying the facts of January 6th speak for themselves. The minute you entered the Capitol building, it was no longer discourse. It was riot. In the largest investigation in its history, the Justice Department has charged more than 700 people in connection with the January 6th attack. More than 200 of them have pleaded guilty. Elizabeth Schulze, ABC News, Washington. Outside with live cam, this is why all those people from the great north flock to San Antonio this time of year. Look how blue the sky yeah. is. It's Beautiful. perfect. It really is. I mean, it's exciting. And we got a lot going on this week, as we pointed out earlier. So this is timing out very nicely. And temperatures will be very comfortable tomorrow as the rodeo gets underway. Let's take a look at the forecast for opening day. AT&T Center will be very busy tomorrow. Uh, temperature wise, by about noontime, we'll be in the mid 60s by the afternoon, 70 degrees and temperatures fall off into the 60s and 50s, although it won't be overly cold by the time we get into Friday morning. Uh, southerly winds 5 to 10 miles per hour right now, 65 degrees at the airport. We've got uh, some upper 60s down to the south, mid 60s as you get up towards Kerrville and Fredericksburg as we zoom out some and look at the state 50s for the Texas Panhandle. Again, very comfortable just about anywhere you go and there is hardly a cloud in the sky tomorrow. We will see a few more high clouds, but no rain. This is uh, not going to be a problem at all. It'll be mostly sunny uh, coming up tomorrow. Today's sunny, though, completely sunny. 71, 4 o'clock, 67, 6 p.m., 59 by 8 p.m. Southwest early winds 5 to 10. The one change in the forecast we do have, some gusty winds and maybe, maybe a shower on Saturday. We'll detail that weekend forecast here in just a few minutes, guys. Thank you, Justin. Lindsay Jacob Ellis bringing home the first gold medal for the U.S. in these 2022 Winter Games. Here's ABC's Alex Perche. He has the latest highlights from Beijing. Team USA with its first gold medal of these 2022 Beijing Winter Olympics. Lindsay Jacob Ellis with the win in the snowboard cross. All those ladies out there today could potentially all win, and it's just how everything comes together. For you. Snowboarding legends Sean White and Chloe Kim have qualified for their halfpipe finals. Kim soared into the finals in first place, but White in what he says is his final Olympics struggled during the qualifying round and goes into these finals as an underdog. American Colby Stevenson earning a silver in the Olympic debut of the Big Air men's freestyle skiing nearly six years after surviving a brain injury from a car crash back in 2016. But heartbreak for two-time Olympic gold medalist Michaela Schifrin, skiing out of the slalom event just days after a similar disappointment during the giant slalom. Visibly disappointed, she sat alongside the course in the snow for more than 20 minutes frustrated, later saying the mistake made her second guess the last 15 years. Schifrin still has three more events left to try to win a medal. On the ice, no medals handed out yet in the team figure skating event. The Russian Olympic Committee won gold, the U.S. silver, and Japan the bronze. But the medal ceremony has been delayed. The International Skating Union saying a situation arose that required legal consultation with the International Olympic Committee. And after a record-breaking score in the short program, Nathan Chen returns to the ice this evening for the free skate program. Alex Perche, ABC News, Beijing. And the Spurs are on the road in Cleveland to start what is a pretty big rodeo road trip as far as moving up the standings are concerned. Larry Mears with more on that coming up in sports. The Smithsonian wants to put your Disneyland pictures on exhibit. We're going to tell you what the museum is trying to do. Amazon enticing employees by more than doubling its maximum base pay in the U.S. Salaries are going from $160,000 to $350,000 a year. According to an internal blog, Post Amazon will also boost its overall compensation ranges for most jobs globally. These changes are applying to corporate and technology workers. A spokesperson for Amazon wouldn't comment but confirmed the authenticity of the blog post. 
a lot of money. The search on for the owner of a special teddy bear that was found inside Milwaukee's airport. Airport officials say it likely belonged to a person who was traveling in or out of the city on January 4th. But what makes this bear so extra special is because it's given to children who are born with congenital heart defects. As the bear waits to be reunited with its family, though, it's enjoying the airport, making all sorts of new friends. And your family's Disney photos can become a historical artifact at the Smithsonian National Museum of American History. Museum officials are looking for pictures from all decades to show how the theme park has changed over the years. They will accept candid photos and even blurry photos along with these stories of what the visit meant to you. Privacy and permissions rules will affect which pictures they use. I've never been to Disney. You've been there, haven't you? Have. You took the kids. You took the I kids. You got some pictures? Oh, a ton. You could be in the Smithsonian. A ton. Filled up my iPhone. You know, it's one of those experiences. You got to yeah. snap photos. Maybe I'll send some in. Uh, 65 degrees so far today. 34 was the low this morning, so we did not get down below freezing. 67 and 44, the averages. Records are 91. Yes, 91 degrees. That was back in 1962, and we've got as low as 15, set back in 1933. Really, we're going to be just about average next couple of days. Another look at that seven day forecast is coming up. Okay, you got your cowboy hat. Mm hmm. Cowboy boots. Mm -hmm. Cowboy boots. Um, jeans. Sure. jeans. Yeah. You there got you a go. jacket. Are we going to need a jacket? Let's rodeo send it tomorrow. Because what we're doing is we're Maybe. we're running the rodeo itself live here on KSAT from 7 to 9 and then from right. 9 to 10 we're going to show you the winners and show you all the cool stuff on the grounds. So we have to kind of dress in layers. Sure. Well, I mean, you may want a jacket. It's not going to be bitterly cold. It may drop into the 50s, maybe 40s by the time the rodeo is over with. Oh, wait. For Ursula, that's cold. Is Come it? on now. Yeah, yeah she's going to need a that's, jacket. That's, so. that's the okay. polar vortex. Yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Threw that one out there. We got into it. Uh, <laughs> speaking of cold, you know, yesterday went outside my Sago Palm. It, it just recovered from last year and then uh, recent freeze. It's, it's all brown again. So here we go again. But uh, a lot of people asking about when are we going to see our last freeze? When are these plants going to come back to life or at least start to? Uh, our average last freeze is February 24th here in San Antonio. But keep in mind, that's just an average. We've had a full range of when that occurs, but that's what it averages out to February 24th. The latest freeze we've ever had here in town, April 3rd, that was back in 1987. Uh, you see in the Hill Country, it's generally March. When we see our last freeze takes until, on average, March 28th in Kerrville. And then the further south you go, the earlier that last freeze occurs. So uh, that's what we're dealing with. Uh, we'll let you know. There's nothing in the seven day forecast that uh, calls for freezing temperatures for San Antonio, other than maybe Sunday morning we'll get close. This morning, we uh, we did get close to the airport. Port SA did officially get below freezing, 31 degrees there. 25 in Kerrville, uh, another morning in the 20s for those in Kerrville and Fredericksburg. And there were a few places to the west and south of San Antonio that got down to freezing. Pleasanton and Creso Springs included. A time lapse, clear skies all the way around. We had a beautiful sunrise, now blue skies. I haven't found a cloud yet. Been looking for a cloud, can't find it. 65 degrees at the airport. Westerly winds at about 10 miles per hour. Dew point is at 35. And the rest of today, you'll see those temperatures climb to about 71. And then we'll fall off quickly into the 60s during the evening hours. And then by uh, tonight, into the 50s and eventually 40s. Here is the big picture. We've got a big area of low pressure up here around the Great Lakes. That's bringing in some snow and rain, but nothing terribly heavy. This isn't a big winter system. It will bring some unsettled weather as it moves east into the New England area. Some rain across deep south Florida, but this is this is quiet pattern. Uh, the entire western half of the country is very, very quiet and actually fairly warm. 64 right now, San Francisco at 75 in LA. The cold stuff underneath that trough where we've got 33 in Minneapolis, 20 in International Falls, but even then, that's not all that cold. They're used to a lot colder numbers up there this time of year, and we've got 60s down here in Texas. So our forecast calls for 71 this afternoon. Stays warm tomorrow, too. We're up to 70. And then uh, Friday, our warmest day, 73 degrees. Front tries to come through, and this is going to be Saturday morning. As it does, this model wants to produce a couple showers. I think it's going to be a, a small window for us. And anything that does develop is going to be really light. So don't expect much out of this. But 
uh, Saturday morning, there is a shower or two possible. Then it turns windy and cooler Saturday afternoon. So if you're heading to the rodeo on Saturday, you, you may want to grab a, a coat. 58 degrees. It does clear out some, I think, Saturday afternoon. And then by Sunday, we're looking at uh, more great weather. So again, 70s next few days. There's the front Saturday. To, we'll call for a 10% chance of some morning showers. And then 63 Sunday and sunny. We've got 67 for Valentine's Day and sunny. And back into the 70s next week, guys. Perfect weather to pick some flowers for your wife. Indeed. Ooh, nice idea. <laughs> um, well, <laughs> why? you rendered this, him speechless. This wow. throws them every time. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to train them. It's not working, Ursula. No, it's not. It's not working. <laughs> hey, you know what? Tomorrow is the NBA trade deadline, and that causes for some anxious moments. Jakob Pertl's name has been thrown out there. The Spurs are at the Cavs tonight, and we also have some regional high school swimming from yesterday. Some fantastic times coming up. I was super happy. Um, he deserved it. Um, I mean, his, his numbers and everything he's done for us this year, um, it's obviously that he should have been an all-star. Like many other NBA players, Derek White is happy DeJounte Murray received an all-star nod on Spurs game day. It is game day for the Spurs, who tip off the eight-game rodeo road trip tonight at the Cleveland Cavaliers. The Spurs last played Friday the 4th when they beat the Rockets 131-106. So that's four days in between games to rest and practice. Now tomorrow's the NBA trade deadline, and there's a report the Bulls made an offer for Jakob Pertl, but the Spurs said no thanks. The trade deadline is always a trying time for NBA teams, and Derek White was asked about that following morning shoot-around at Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse in Cleveland. Obviously, you'd want everybody to stay around, and um, we just continue to work and build and stuff that we worked on since training camp. But um, I mean, it's a business end of the day, and whatever they feel is right, they're going to do. And um, but obviously, we'd like to everybody to stay around and just keep, keep building. Here's that matchup. Cavs will host the Spurs tonight at 6. Area swimmers dove into the pool at Josh Davis Natatorium yesterday afternoon for the Region 7 6A Swimming and Diving Championships. And a pair of Clark Cougars put on a show, taking home four individual titles. Junior Braden Mendocino won the 100-yard butterfly and 100-yard breaststroke races, while sophomore Evan Crowley dominated the 100-yard freestyle and set a regional record in 100-yard backstroke. For his performance, Crowley was named Male Swimmer of the Meet and he feels good about his time is heading into state. Uh, well, it's nicer than last year since I only went in one event last year. So I can definitely see the progress and I'm happy with it. But we're not done yet, so I got a way to go. Uh, I think I can place really well, maybe even pull off a victory. And uh, yeah, we'll go from there. Johnson senior Gavin Moore won the 50 yard freestyle, finished second in the 100 yard freestyle, helping lead the Jaguar boys to the overall team title for the first time in program history. We had no idea we were going to do this this year. At the beginning of the year, I mean, we didn't really have this kind of expectation, maybe for districts, maybe not for regionals, but so that's crazy to be able to go this far. On the girls' side, Churchill's Carly Cronk swam her way to the top of the podium in both the 200 and 500-yard freestyle events. Last year as a freshman, Cronk qualified for the state in the 100-yard butterfly. So how does she feel about swimming a different schedule in her second year? Definitely different. I think last year when I did the 100 fly, it made me realize that, like, it got me the experience for this year's date. I'm just looking forward to swimming with my teammates because more of my team made it to state and I'm looking forward to going to state with them. The Reagan girls took home the team title. You can hear from them and catch a full recap of the entire meet on the BGC page at KSAT.com. Those medals are looking good. The smiles are looking good. That trophy is beautiful. Got some top swimmers in San Antonio. We do. Awesome. Way to go, guys. Appreciate it. All right, we're heading over to SA Live. <laughs> okay, yep. so hear us out. So this woman found this item at a yard sale, but she has no idea what it is, and she's asked everybody she knows. So we're going to try and help her out. You two saw it, right, mm -hmm. David and Ursula? What do you think it is? 
I don't know if they're still with us. Yeah. They are not. Okay. But they saw it. We're going to get a, an answer from them. So <laughs> it, it's really, it's, it's interesting. It's an interesting contraption. It may be useful. I don't know. Yeah, maybe somebody out there knows. So stick around because we're going to talk about that and show you it in the show. All, All right. right. Roses for Valentine, but not what you are thinking. Jennifer Brooks, the owner and creator of 1228 Bakery, shows us. So Tootsie Rolls? Tootsie Rolls. I took this idea to my kids' school for career day, and the kids had a blast. Um, and they're really malleable, so you just kind of squish them around in your hand. You start out with this little cone, yeah, um, and then you just start layering them on. Get kind of a little um, thin edge on there, and, and just start fanning them on. Yeah, oh, and you've that. got this cute little rose that the kids can um, have a good time with, and they can eat it afterwards. <laughs> what is that? Um, yeah, it's really it's a fun little craft to do with them. Adorable! I right. love that. Great. We're gonna have more from Jennifer because she's gonna show us how you can create some sweet treats on a budget like this, okay? Yes. And of course, you know, from creating edible art to creating glass art, you know, no experience is needed when you take a class where Jen is, right? Right, we're at Jay Philippa's art studio and gallery. We're gonna do some glass art, but first, what are we doing here? You're gonna do an acrylic pour and a flip cup Whoa. pour. Oh, there okay. you go, okay. perfect. There, there go. you go. Okay, now lift your cup. Look at this. Whoa. Now this makes the art for you. All these cells are going to come alive. And we use silicone on, in here. Look how beautiful. So Jen, you can start to stretch it a little bit like that. And you create this beautiful art. All right, and over here, Rosa's showing the glass art. We're going to make some of this and break some glass, guys. Back to you. <laughs> That's really cool looking. All right, big game Sunday, and that means food. Wait yes. till you see the snacks that we are going to make. All that and more when SA Live continues in just a few minutes.